Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed products. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a monogreen elves deck titled Expert Elves, as it features three copies of Arishkar's Expertise, the six mana rare sorcery from Kaladesh Remastered, saying draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control, and then you can cast a spell with converted mana cost five or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. So Rishkar's expertise gives the deck this combo angle that can lead to some very spectacular wins where you can potentially draw half of your deck and eventually cast a copy of Craterhoof Behemoth, the 8 mana 5-5 five five beast with haste, saying when Craterhoof enters a battlefield, creatures you control gain trample and get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of creatures you control, which will often end the game on the spot. Now, how does an elf deck typically generate enough mana to cast a Rishkar's Expertise? Well, that's where most of our three drops come in handy. We've got three copies of Marwyn the Nurture, a 1-1 legendary elf, saying whenever another elf enters a battlefield under our control, Marwyn gets a plus one plus one counter, and then we can tap Marwyn to add an amount of green mana equal to Marwyn's power, so also gets potentially boosted by various anthem effects, which will give her additional power. And besides generating a lot of mana, Marwyn also makes it so we have a big creature in play to draw us a ton of cards with Rishkar's expertise, so the two cards definitely have a lot of synergy. Then we also have the full playset of Elvish Archdruid, a 2-2 elf giving other elves we control plus one plus one, and then taps to add green mana for each elf we control, which can also easily get out of hand. And then we have two copies of Selvala, Heart of the Wilds, a 2-3 legendary elf scout, saying whenever another creature enters a battlefield, its controller may draw a card if its power is greater than each other creature's power, which doesn't come up a whole lot in this deck since our creatures tend to be quite small, but we can also pay one green mana and tap Selvala to add X mana in any combination of colors where X is the greatest power among creatures we control, which can also potentially add a ton of mana to cast our Rishkar's expertise. And then the final piece of the puzzle are the four copies of Stony Strength, a single green mana for an instant that puts a plus one plus one counter on target creature we control, and we also get to untap that creature. So we can first add mana with our Marwyn, Archdruid or Selvala, and then untap them with our Stony Strength to add a ton of mana once again, which will often give us the mana required to keep comboing off, can potentially cast our Stony Strength for free using our Rishkar's expertise, even if we didn't have any additional mana floating, and then untap one of our elves and then keep casting more spells, and potentially win the game on the spot. So that's the basic gist of the deck, and now let's take a look at the rest of it. At one mana we also have the full playset of Lanor Elves, of course. Great turn one play, letting us ramp into the various three drops on turn two. Then we've got the full playset of Elvish Visionary, just a 1-1 elf that when it enters a battlefield lets us draw a card. Then we've got four copies of Incubation Druid, an 0-2 mana elf that makes one mana, but we can also adapt it for five mana, putting three plus one plus one counters on it, and as soon as Incubation Druid has a plus one plus one counter on it, it taps for three mana instead of just one, which also means we can potentially speed up the process instead of adapting by casting a Stony Strength, which will put a plus one plus one counter on Incubation Druid, so it can make three mana right away, so that's also an interesting combo. And then we've got the full play of Elvish Clancaller as one of our many Anthem effects, a 1-1 one -one Elf Druid giving other Elves we control plus one plus one, so still very beneficial in combination with a card like Marwyn, and will also make it so our greatest power among creatures we control is one greater as well. And then for six mana we can tap our Clancaller to search up an additional copy of a card named Elvish Clancaller and put it onto the battlefield, so it can also be a nice mana sink. Then we've covered most of our three drops, except for the two copies of Steel Leaf Champion, a three mana 5-4 Elf Knight, saying Steel Leaf Champion cannot be blocked by creatures with power two or less. So this just gives us a beefy creature to have a large creature to go with our Return of the Wild Speaker and Rishkar's Expertise, and also makes it so we have more mana with Selvala potentially, because it doesn't always work out that our Marwyn survives. Sometimes the opponent has a cheap burn spell to take her out, so then having a Steel Leaf Champion to fall back on can be nice as well. And then of course we're also a collected company deck, despite having a few additional non-creature spells with our expertise and our study strength, we still have enough creatures for collected company to be worth it, especially considering a lot of our creatures are three drops as well, which have good synergy with company. And then the last card we haven't covered yet are the two copies of Return of the Wild Speaker, a 5 mana instant saying draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control, or non-human creatures you control get plus 3 plus 3 until end of turn, which can also give us a nice finisher. So Return of the Wild Speaker is very similar to Rishkar's expertise, and in fact we can even cast a Return to the Wild Speaker for free after casting a Rishkar's expertise to potentially draw even more cards, and maybe go digging for Stony Strength to then untap one of our creatures and make even more mana, and keep combo and every now and then you might use the second mode if you just have a random bunch of elves in play and want to end the game. 
and then of course our three copies of Expertise and the one Crater Hoof Behemoth, and then a mana base, 16 Basic Force and three copies of Castle Garenbrig, which can also potentially make more mana when it comes to activating our elf abilities or casting multiple elves in the same turn. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Lurus of the Dream Den deck. And yeah, this hand's fine. Turn to Incubation Druid, turn 3. Could maybe go for Company or could play a 3-drop first. Facing turn 1 Swamp, so it could be the Red-Black Pyromancer Lurus deck. And a turn 1 Thoughtseize is gonna have a look. Probably just takes Company. And then we might play Marwyn first, so it starts accumulating plus one plus one counters. See a Croxa in the graveyard. Opponent might have a village rights in hand. And then once Marwyn picks up a few counters, my Return of the Wild Speaker is also going to be a bit better. Another Supplier. Our opponent's still missing red mana. And a Claim brings back Croxa. So, goodbye Visionary. And a Fatal Push now kills Marwyn because they enabled Revolt with Croxa, so yeah, that's too bad. Can adapt Incubation Druid and then we'll be able to maybe draw 4 with Return. Opponent puts Lurus in hand. Let's see, what's the best sequencing? I could play Incubation Druid, Arch Druid taps for 3, and then I can adapt Incubation Druid and then next turn return. It seems fine. And I guess I'll wait on adapting. It's going to be a Dreadhorde Arcanist for now. And Fame to give it hastes. Which gets back a... Spark Harvest to kill one of my elves. Presumably the Archdruid. But we get to block the Arcanist at least. Alright, so let's draw three. And we hit a company, a double company even, so that's nice. I've already played land for the turn, so I think we'll just pass. Opponent can escape Croxa. And in response we probably want a company in case we hit Visionary, which draws us into a card we don't need. And then I guess Expertise is better than Company here. Alright, so cast expertise. And then we'll play, I guess, uh, visionary for free. She finds a stony strength to make more mana, although we're kind of out of action at the moment. So I can play clan caller to get more clan callers next turn.
so I guess we'll pass. And then we're hoping to find another Rishkar's expertise or Return of the Wild Speaker, top decking Crater Hoof, also potentially just wins the game. Claim for a hasty Arcanists. Which gets back Thoughtseize. Croxa triggers. So I guess we want to make use of our stony strength while we can. Discards forests. Let them cast the Thoughtseize first. And then where do we want a stony strength? I could stony strength the druid to make more mana. Or I could just put it on the steel leaf to have a bigger creature. I guess I'll put it on Incubation Druid. And then don't necessarily want to trade for Croxa, but we'll eat Arcanists and then... Alright, our opponent concedes. I guess they were dead on the way back. And even if we didn't draw anything for the turn, we could just activate our Clan Caller next turn, get another copy and just overwhelm the opponent in Elves, and eventually take over the board. And yeah, this also shows that the deck has a bit of resiliency here with cards like Company, Rishkar's Expertise, and Return of the Wild Speaker to refuel and find more elves. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Always love seeing a turn one Lenor elves. Well, let's see what we're up against. I'm guessing this is goblins. Don't ask me how I know. Alright, sadly, couldn't play Marwyn turn 2, but turn 3 will still do. Turn 2, Wily Goblin. Alrighty, so... Yeah, I guess we just play Marwyn. And then probably find Trading Visionary for Wily Goblin. Since a Wily Goblin could generate mana if they find a Prospector. Goblin Matron might go after, like a Goblin Chain Whirler, maybe if they have one. And just goes for the Prospector to potentially cast a Muxus next turn. Silvala the draw. So we can activate Castle. Alright, so we've got a big Marwyn in play now. At the very least we can activate Clan Caller next turn or Adapt Incubation Druid. But of course hoping to draw a Rishkar's Expertise to combo off. In the meantime we're gonna see a Muxus here. And they just hit double snoop, so could have been worse. So I guess we'll get clan caller. And then... Alright, my opponent explodes. I don't think they were dead by any means, but maybe their hand wasn't very good. And they didn't have the best Muxus hit. But yeah, I mean, at this point, if we ever find Return of the Wild Speaker, a Rishkar's Expertise, or just top deck a Crater Hoof Behemoth, my opponent is super dead. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a nice opening hand. Turn on Elves, turn to Archdruid. 
facing Rogren Triome. So it could be a more controlling deck. Although Temple Garden means I don't know what we're up against exactly. Maybe some sort of five color Niv Mizzet deck, who knows? Blotson, all right. So my opponent must be playing Lotus Field as well, if that's the case. So how do we want to sequence? Play Elves. Play Incubation Druids. And then I can adapt Incubation Druid. And then next turn cast Return of the Wild Speaker. And potentially draw four. There's Lotus Field, so adds three mana thanks to Blotson. And a Sweltering Suns kills everything except Incubation Druid. So that's definitely a setback. Sylvala the draw. Do I still return here? I guess I do. Could also Stony Strength first. But it only draws me one additional card. Maybe that's worth it. And then we can still play Archdruid here. Or I can Marwin first. I guess we'll Marwin first. Put lots of on tap. And commits Incubation Druid. I guess there's nowhere for me to spend that mana. Find a crater hoof. Selvala gets countered. Alright, I guess uh, next turn we can maybe Crater Hoof, we'll see. If they want to cast uh, Memory Half, that's fine by me. And they're pretty close to escaping Uro. Another Growth Spiral. And another Lotus Field, so that's three more mana. Uru escapes, has to get rid of Commit Memory. And another untapped Triome, but that's it. Ooh, and a Rishkar's Expertise. Don't mind if I do. So... How do we want to play out this turn? I guess play Incubation Druid first. And then, what happens if I were to Crater Hoof? Plus 5, plus 5... 10, 20, 27. I would force him to chump with Uro. So it wouldn't quite be lethal, but it would be pretty strong. I think I just expertise. Cast a free company. Find Steel Leaf and Clan Caller.
And then play another Archdruid. Seven mana. Company. If we can find a stony strength, that would be juicy here. Just an elves. Alright, still pretty good. And next turn, this crater hoof will be more than enough. Uro attacks. I guess we'll block with Steel Leaf. Although, I guess we want to play around Sweltering Suns as much as possible. So, I guess Elves and Visionary. Commit Marwin. That's fine. And memory, so no more crater hoof. But our opponent packs it in. So yeah, next turn we could have done quite a bit of damage. And uh, yeah, cool game here against a Blood Sun ramp, despite an early sweltering suns slowing us down. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with an acceptable hand. Facing Gigantha the Wellspring, which could still be a lot of different decks. The Paradox Engine combo decks have recently become quite popular as well. Looks like a Jun Sacrifice deck instead. So they can have quite a bit of interaction with our elves, so that's potentially an issue. Claim the Firstborn, get sacrificed to Witch's Oven. Think we kick things off with Marwyn. Although Marwyn does die to Mayhem Devil. Whereas Archdruid does not necessarily. So being able to play Marwyn and another elf in the same turn might be key. Alright, I guess I can buy that. And then I get to hit for two. Hopefully no claim. There's claim. And another oven. Alright, so, I mean, I really need this Marwyn to survive. If they have Mayhem Devil, that's just too bad, I guess. Gonna be a Midnight Reaper instead. And we get to untap. Alright, so we get to start making mana with Marwyn. So kick off with the Lenor Elves. And then we can go with Silvile Incubation Druid. And hopefully next turn casts a big expertise. Alright, let's see what happens. Suppose we could just cast a Crater Hoof next turn too. Take three. Opponent goes digging with Midnight Reaper. Another scrap heap. Does not draw any cards because we have a four powered creature with Marwyn. Opponent desperate to find some interaction. Finds a priest. And we get to untap. 
So what happens if I cast Crater Hoof? Um, yeah, I mean, I probably win the game, but where's the fun in that? Let's cast Expertise instead. Cast a free Return of the Wild Speaker. Draw cards. Sadly, didn't find a Stony Strength, which is what I really wanted. But we can still cast another Expertise and keep going. Six, seven, eight. I can play a Clan Caller first. And then still Expertise. Yeah, that's fine. And I guess play another Clan Caller. And then Expertise. And then we have Stony Strength to untap, so for now we'll cast Company. <laughs> company misses, alright. That's a bit of a bummer. Play Elves. Stony Strength to untap Marwyn. And then I guess it's time to Crater Hoof. So go Visionary into Crater Hoof. So we took a little bit of a detour through Rishkar's expertise and a company whiffing, but we still managed to get there in the end. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Double Lenor Elves, and then hopefully Visionary can find something to enhance our Elves so Return can draw more cards facing a Temple of Enlightenment. So probably a blue-white control deck, if I had to guess. Company is definitely a nice draw here. Gives us a way to maybe end of turn, play some elves and play around a sweeper. Opponent must have a cycling card in hand, or maybe an opt. Probably a cycling card like cast out or sensor, but it's an opt instead. So don't need to worry about a sweeper this turn. It's going to be a search for Ascanta instead. So this is a good turn to cast our Collected Company. And then I'll still have one mana available, which I guess I'm not really using. Could play around Sensor as well by not attacking with an Elves. So I'll just get in for one and pass. And then end of turn company. It's gonna get vetoed. Sadly don't have another company in hand. So now we're in a bit of an awkward spot where my opponent could easily still have a sweeper. And uh, yeah, I can't really play around it all that well here. Just hitting for three isn't a ton of pressure. So I guess I'm committing more to the board. And next turn we can just cast Return to pump our team to maybe win. But if they have a Wrath of God, we're dead. Alright, no Wrath of God. Well, that opens up a lot of options. Of course, they could have a Settled Wreckage, technically speaking. So how do we win a sequence or turn? I guess I could play Steel Leaf and then Silvala makes a ton of mana, which can cast Return. And also draws a card. So... 
I mean, I could draw cards with Return of the Wild Speaker, but it could just win us the game as well. Can search up an extra elf with a clan call or two. And then if they settle me, I can just draw a ton of cards and we'll have a lot of lands to spend those extra resources with. If they don't have settle, six, seven, eight, yeah, they would be super dead to pumping the team. So, opponent lets damage happen. Do I want to interfere? I mean, if they're just holding a counter spell, I don't necessarily want to pull the trigger on return. Could adapt incubation druids. But then I won't have the mana to return, so I think I just let damage happen. And return is an instant, so I can respond to potential sweeper. Opponent goes for a chemist's insight, so in response, I guess we'll draw. Alright, so now we've got a nice full grip, in case they do find a sweeper here. At least Shatter still draws as a card. And then we can get on the board again with Steel Leaf and Arch Druids. Next turn, maybe draw again with Return. Ascanta transforms. Finds Approach of the Second Sun. So that's their win condition. Get to untap. Alright, we should be able to do some damage here. Can start by playing Arch Druids, which would present lethal on board. If this gets countered, I can still go Visionary into return. Gets absorbed, opponent gains three. Yep. So there are 12. Because if I go visionary into return, I'm still only hitting for nine damage. So we'll return. And there's a stony strength, excellence. So Stony untaps Arch Druids. Which makes more mana. And expertise for next turn. So we'll see if they want to cast Approach or go digging with Ascanta to maybe find a Sweeper. Narset's kind of annoying since that stops my expertise from drawing cards. I guess we don't want to play Visionary with Narset still in play. So they get a lot of looks at more sweepers. I have just the trick for this. Swift response and approach. Okay. 
All right, so I guess we gotta start by killing Narsets. I won't forget our time together. And then can go clan caller and still expertise. And then do I even want to cast a company or do I keep it as a way to maybe get back on the board? Can just play Archdruid, I guess. All right, I mean, we'll see if we're dead here. If they activate Ascanta to dig towards their approach, they don't have the mana to cast it afterwards. They're probably just digging for another sweeper. Conqueror's death is fine. Get to untap. gets absorbed. Sure. Stony strength, so we've got all the mana in the world. Dovin's veto, maybe. Nope. And then I guess I can search up an extra clan caller. And then we even have stony strength here to counter swift response. Alright, I'm quite happy with how the expert elves performed today, faced a wide variety of decks all the way from combo to control decks, and we managed to come out on top. So the expertise does give the deck a little bit additional card draw and resiliency against sweepers and removal heavy decks, and uh, does make the deck a little bit clunkier, so if the opponent has some cheap removal for your early mana accelerants, the deck will feel a lot more sluggish than some of the previous elves iterations that we've seen. But uh, yeah, I'm enjoying the deck quite a bit and of course having those big turns with expertise and then stony strength to make more mana and keep going are a ton of fun. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.